Hello once again, AP Calculus BC students. We are continuing our discussion with uh, polar graphs, polar coordinates, and particularly the calculus involved in finding the area of certain uh, parts of these polar graphs. Um, in the example that we're going to do here, example two, we're actually going to be finding the area of the region lying between the inner and outer loops of the limosome defined by r equal 1 minus 2 times the sine of theta. And like most area problems in polar, the difficulty really does not lie so much in setting up the integrand or even really solving the integral, calculating the integral. It's more from figuring out what the boundaries are. And that's going to be uh, our primary focus here at the beginning of this problem. But before we do that, we, we want to take note that uh, there is a particular formula, if you will, for finding the area in polar that's sort of born out of the area of finding the uh, sector, the area of a sector in, in for geometry, which was defined to be one-half times the angle formed times the square of the radius of, the, of that particular circle that you're dealing with. And um, perhaps you, uh, hopefully up, at, up until this point, uh, you've studied a little bit about area in polar and recall that the calculus version looks a little something like this. There's your one half like we have here, but now we use the integration and the boundaries are angle measures. That's why the Greek letters alpha and beta, beta are typically used times the function f of theta, which you'll note is indeed a function of theta, which is nothing more than your radius r squared. And then the width respect to theta or the width theta sort of serves as this theta measurement that you've got over here in the geometric form. So uh, if, if developing this particular formula is sort of a, a bother to you, I would invite you to check out one of my other videos or just anything that you can find out um, on the web that deals with the development of the polar area formula. We're just going to go ahead and utilize this formula for this particular problem. Now, the primary focus, like I said, is understanding what the boundaries of integration are going to be. And uh, the directions here say to begin by using your TI-inspired to sketch a graph. Well, I know that not all of you may have a TI-inspire, uh, like the students at my school do. Uh, perhaps you're using a TI-83, a TI-84, a TI-89, perhaps some other uh, manufactured calculator. It really doesn't matter. As long as you've got some kind of a graphing utility, you should be able to sketch this graph pretty accurately and then use some kinds of means to figure out what these particular boundaries are going to be. So let's slide on over software here and we'll just uh, create a new document, uh, insert a graph, and we need to make sure that we are in the right graphing mode, polar. And then we'll just enter the equation, r equal 1 minus 2 sine of theta. Now, the TI Inspire model sort of sets the default uh, domain of theta to be between 0 and 2 pi, which is going to be safe in, in this particular case. Um, polar graphs are funny. As you may know, you've got to be careful because sometimes from 0 to 2 pi, the graph might trace itself twice. Uh, those types of graphs typically trace themselves once from 0 to pi. Some graphs need the entire uh, domain from 0 to 2 pi to do their entire thing. So in the case of this particular problem, we don't even need to concern ourselves with that much theta. Uh, but it's going to be safe here, and we're going to go ahead and just keep that default there. Now the theta step of 0.13 is always kind of peculiar. The TI Inspire defaults it at pi over 24. It just likes that much precision when we, we do some per certain things. So we're going to keep that all the same, and I'm going to hit enter and might even think about zooming in just a bit, maybe one time to make this a little bigger. And there we go. Good looking limosone graph there with the inner loop. And our job is to find out what the area is of that inner loop. Well, as I said before, the best way to figure out these angle measures is to do a trace of the graph. And your utility should allow you to do that. The Inspire here uh, would allow us to go into the menu and hit trace. And I'm going to real quickly look at the trace step. I, 
and just verify I want something um, that's going to be helpful for this particular problem. Well, pretty much any problem that I'm going to tackle, I like to use pi over 6. I don't think that we need to be so precise as to use pi over 24 or even a pi over 12. Uh, pi <coughs> excuse me, pi over 6 <coughs> usually does a, a pretty good job for us, and I think it will here. So if we go back into trace and get everything started off, uh, you'll notice that initially you may not be at, at your radian value for, like, say, uh, zero radians, which is a good place to start. I just have to go back one, and I'm going to be there. So that would be, say, the first point that you might arrive at if you were going to set this problem up using, a, say, a T-chart. Each click here of the right pad will take me a pi over 6 uh, measure of theta. So you'll see with one click I'm already at pi over 6, which seems to be uh, the pole which is where this inner loop is being started. Now you'll notice the Inspire gives us a decimal approximation, 0.524, which is indeed equivalent to pi over 6. I'll click on the right pad again, which would depict 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, you're going to want to take note of that position, 4 pi over 6, and then with one more click I'm at 5 pi over 6, which means I have finished the tracing of this inner loop, and we could essentially use the boundaries from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 to do this. Now I'm going to go ahead and do something a little different. If you recall, when we were oops, back here at 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2 or 1.57, I noticed that I'm halfway done with that inner loop. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use that as a boundary only because it might be a little bit easier to plug in a pi over 2 value into a trigonometric function rather than, say, a 5 pi over 6. And then in that case, I'll know that I'll need to double uh, this particular integral to account for the entire region. So let's go ahead and go back to our Word doc, and we will write the integration for this particular problem. It was area is equal to, remember, I'm going to double the basic integral, 1 half, times the integration where pi over 6 was my lower boundary and I elected to use pi over 2. And then the function f of theta would all be squared. Now, once again, I want to talk a little bit about these boundaries because uh, if a student's going to have trouble with, with finding area and polar, it's typically going to be with boundaries. And I think it's partly because when you think of integration boundaries with area, uh, especially with, I would say, 90% of the integrals that you work with, which are done with respect to x, you're thinking the boundaries need to be x values, values or positions along, say, an, an x or horizontal axis. But that's not the case with polar. Since the independent variable here is clearly theta, these are angles, and they have a completely different role in the problem than, say, the boundaries um, along an x-axis would serve as. So once again, in this particular problem, we've basically found the boundaries that would map out this portion, as if you can see the picture over here to the right, which would serve as one half of the um, angles required to make up this entire inner loop. Now, um, in the event that this problem is presented to you on a on a, some type of a quiz, a test, some other assessment where you're not allowed to use a calculator, it can be done. And it's not um, that impossible or that much more time consuming to do. You know, typically speaking, if a student is asked to graph a polar curve without a calculator, you're probably going to be using a T-chart. And in this particular instance, this T-chart, uh, like most T-charts in polar, would consist of a theta column and an R column, and, and you would start with a theta value of zero, and I won't go through all the details here, I'll, I'll let you do that uh, on your own, but you would have an R value of one, which you recall was our initial starting position, and then again, I, I like to use pi over six increments, they give me just enough accuracy without going crazy on some of the trigonometric ratios that we have to perform in our heads, but pi over six would indeed give us an R value of zero. That's when we started the inner loop. And if you continue this process, let's say you went all the way up to five pi over six, 
you would indeed find that you were going to be at zero again. Now, by utilizing the fact that 3 pi over 6, or pi over 2, in this case, giving you an r value of negative 1, it may have occurred to you then that these two guys would then make up half of that inner loop, and you would not have had to generate nearly as many values of theta. At the very worst, 5 pi over 6 should be the last value of theta that you would have to generate. It is not a requirement that a student sketch the entire Limassol curve in this case, because the values beyond 5 pi over 6 are putting you in an area that just isn't pertinent to this particular problem. So you would definitely want to save time by not uh, sketching or, or, or generating as many points uh, as you would need to in this case. So let's go back to the integration problem that we've set up, and we'll go ahead and do some simplifying. Our 2 and our 1 half would cancel. And like most binomials that are squared, we are going to expand this out. In this particular case, we would have 1 minus 4 sine theta plus 4 sine squared of theta. And at this point, we notice uh, a couple things. We've got a three-term expression. The first two terms are quite easy to integrate. The third term, not so easy unless you utilize a very powerful trig identity that's used all throughout your integration techniques in Calc BC or in a Calc 2 class in college. And I'm going to do that uh, before we do any kind of integral work. And the identity that I'm speaking of uh, deals with the double ops, the uh, double angle, yes, for cosine. And in this particular instance, sine squared of theta is equivalent to 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta all divided by 2. Now, if that's giving you some trouble, again, you can take a look at any of my other uh, videos from, I think, the Chapter 8 uh, text of Larson deals with that quite extensively, or once again, you can uh, just seek out certain other uh, videos or tutorials dealing with the trig identity cosine of 2 theta or sine squared of theta. Uh, I think we're set to do uh, a little bit of integration work at this point. Um, I think what I'm going to do one last time before we perform the integration, let's go ahead and simplify the contents here. Notice that this 4 would distribute through, and I would have a 4 over 2 or a 2 that can combine with that initial 1. And then I'll just kind of drop my minus 4 sine of theta. And then I would have a negative 4 over 2 is, again, a 2. That would serve as the coefficient of my cosine 2 theta. So here we go. Integration of 3, of course, with respect to theta is 3 theta. The integral of negative 4 sine of theta would be a positive because the integration of sine is going to be negative cosine. Uh, I said negative cosine of theta. Okay, I'm going to switch colors here all of a sudden. Let's see, 4 cosine of theta. And if we integrate cosine of 2 theta with a 2 coefficient, uh, what we're going to have to consider here is the fact that there is a u substitution going on. u is 2 theta. The derivative of that u would be 2 d theta, where the d theta, if it were solved for, would be a du over 2. So it's this over 2 or this 1 half coefficient that would come out in front of our integral that, <coughs> excuse me, would essentially cancel this 2 out in front. So we'd have a minus, just the integral of cosine of u, which of course is sine of u, where the u is 2 theta. And then of course our values come into play. Now we are all set to plug in the boundaries. We'll start with pi over 2. go ahead and multiply 2 by my pi over 2 and get just pi. Then I'll subtract the quantity of what we get after we plug in our pi over 6 boundary.
2 times pi over 6 is pi over 3. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, we are ready to simplify this a bit. We'll start off with 3 pi over 2. The cosine of pi over 2, of course, is 0, as well as the sine of pi. So it doesn't seem like we have a whole lot going on here at the beginning. I'm going to distribute my negative now as I simplify the contents within the brackets, starting off with pi over 2. And then I'll subtract. And then the cosine of pi over 6 might be one of the more challenging things in this simplification. Pi over 6 is the same as 30 degrees. So if you have to do this, no big deal. You would just set up a trig ratio here where you could let the opposite side of 30 degrees, say, be 1, in which case the hypotenuse would be 2, the sh uh, longer leg or radical 3. So we're just dealing with ratios. So the cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so we would have 4 radical 3 over 2. And once again, I would have a minus in front of that because of the distribution of the negative here. And let me go ahead and lay out my sign change for the next term. And then pi over 3, I could use the same triangle. And yep, the sine of pi over 3, who would have thought? It's the same as the cosine of pi over 6. So I have a radical 3 over 2. When we combine like terms, we would have 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2 uh, combined to be just pi when you subtract. And note here we could uh, put those together, uh, say, uh, as a negative 3, radical 3, all over 2. And I have really no problem with this particular answer. Yeah, you could get a common denominator, but it doesn't really do a whole lot with it. And this answer would serve as an accurate depiction of the area of the inner loop of our limousine. This, I suppose we could go back to our Inspire, and if you have any kind of um, CAS-type calculator, you could do this as well. I will insert a, uh, a calculator page here, and we'll just do our integration <coughs> with uh, 2 multiplied by our half. I know that it's probably silly that I do this because they're going to cancel, but I just want our integral to look exactly like it did when we first wrote it initially in the problem. Pi over 6 was our lower boundary. Upper boundary was a pi over 2. And we were integrating the quantity 1 minus 2 sine of theta. Where it was all squared. And we did so with respect to theta. Check the answer out. Oh, it's always nice when it matches your, your analytic work. Pi minus 3 radical 3 over 2 is indeed the area of the inner loop of this Lima song. Anyway, hope the video helped. Uh, good luck to you and hope to see you next time.